Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Kalin, a general and bariatric surgeon, and in this video I will demonstrate the typical structure of the digestive system. I advise all the patients considering or who have already undergone bariatric surgery to attempt to have a basic understanding of the structure of their digestive system and comprehend the changes that have been made to their bodies as the result of the procedure. They will be better able to understand and adequately follow the postoperative care and adjust to their new lifestyle as a result. The primary goal of this movie series is to give my private patients educational resources. Nevertheless, I warmly invite anyone who is interested in viewing this content to do so with a caveat that I strongly advise consulting a skilled bariatric surgeon before proceeding with any medical or surgical intervention. Please feel free to reach out to me at the above address as well. To begin, let's go through the usual anatomy of the human digestive system. Before any surgery is done, our organs are arranged as shown. Starting from the top, we can see the esophagus or the connection tube between our mouth and the stomach. This has the purpose of transferring the food from the mouth into the stomach for further digestion. The esophagus continues with the stomach. This is the reservoir where the food gets stored and mixed with the acid before it's transferred into the intestine. Between the esophagus and the stomach we have a valve called the GE junction. This prevents the food and acid from backing into the esophagus and causing reflux. When this valve is not functioning correctly, the food or the acid from the stomach can travel backwards and cause heartburn or acid reflux. Then the stomach continues with a small intestine. Here the nutrients and vitamins get absorbed into the bloodstream. Between the stomach and the intestine we have another type of valve mechanism called the pylorus. This regulates the release of stomach content into the intestine. The first part of the intestine, called duodenum, is very important as this is the place where all the digestive juices and enzymes come into contact with the food released from the stomach. The liver and the gallbladder, seen on the right side, and the pancreas, seen on the left side, behind the stomach, are connected to the duodenum and release their secretions here, further contributing to the digestion. Understanding that the bile and pancreatic secretions come in contact with the food here in the duodenum will help you to understand later the changes that occur with the gastric bypass or duodenal switch surgery where the food will come in contact with this secretion more downstream in the small bowel. The next part, the small bowel, is the longest segment of the digestive tract. The length of this segment varies between 3 and 10 meters. However, the majority of adult population has an average of 6 meter length of small bowel. This is the place where the nutrients and calories get absorbed. And finally, the next segment is the colon where the residual material that could not be digested and absorbed is prepared to be evacuated out of our body. Another valve mechanism exists here between the small bowel and the colon called the ileocecal valve. This regulates the intestinal emptying. Along with this intricate network of tubes and valves, the entire digestive system also produces a wide, a wide range of hormones that help control digestion and absorption and are crucial in fight against obesity. Understanding how the digestive system looks naturally will also make it easier for you to comprehend how various bariatric surgery procedures alter the body's natural structure in an effort to promote weight loss. I encourage you to see my other movies which describe each type of bariatric surgery in detail along with any unique modifications. Thank you.